your second album, solo album, as the Night Watchman. Do you think by now people are used to the softer sounds of Tom Morello? I'm not certain that I describe them as softer sounds. Uh, I think that while the uh, they may not be played through uh, a Marshall stack, that the uh, that the Night Watch material may be some of the heaviest uh, material that I've ever been, been involved in. That's what I know. Yeah, yeah, uh, and uh, and as far as getting getting used to it, I mean, it's um, you know, it's it's clearly a different different ball of wax. But this tour is half acoustic and half electric, so fans of you know my electric Marshall stack shredding will be well pleased with what they see on the stage. Uh, but for me it's important to balance that with the uh, uh, the darker acoustic songs, the more spare three chords of the truth. More like what was on the first album, right? Correct, correct. Um, speaking in terms of the influences for Night Watchmen, both this album and, well, since you started the project, I guess, is do you draw from an entirely different set of influences? Yeah. I, I think there, there, there are different links in the same chain, and that this, uh, the, the genre, for lack of a better term, protest music from the you know, from you know Joe Hill to Pete Seeger and Woody Guthrie and Lead Belly um, to the early Dylan. Uh, I, I was exposed to all of that through the Bruce Springsteen's Nebraska and Ghost of Tom Joad records, and so those were those that was those were my entry drugs to that world. Uh, and I found that it was music that was you know we were just talking about heavy music a second ago. Yes. I've always been a fan of, of rebel music and of heavy music. And I found that those albums, as rebellious and heavy as anything in the Metallica catalog, I was really drawn to it for that reason. So Billy Bragg and the Clash. Yeah, absolutely. Billy, of... Billy Bragg. Billy Bragg was a huge, huge influence on me. Uh, Johnny Cash as well. Leonard Cohen. You know, I like I like the artists that uh, have trouble hitting the high notes because that really helps me in my rich milk chocolate baritone. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, who would you say is the biggest? Um, limiting it to one to three, let's say. Who would you say is the biggest? Influences on you, both artistically and attitudinally, if that's what. Yeah, I would say if at I, every stage. If I, if I had to, if you're you're making me limited to three, I, I'll, four. I would say okay, well I'll, I'll take. I mean, def, definitely Springsteen and the the, the acoustic Springsteen, um, and the the the, uh, the personal politics that that, that you're finding like songs like the Ghost of Tom Joe on Nebraska that really spoke to me in my Midwestern upbringing. Um, then I would say the next influence would be the Black Panther Party and, on my music. And when I read that, I grew up in, a very, in an all-white conservative suburb of Chicago. And when I read um, the writings of Huey Newton and Eldridge Cleaver, it was, I was like, holy smoke, there's an entire different way of looking at the world than the one that I'm growing up in. And that has, that's informed my music very much in both my guitar playing and in my songwriting, that you don't have to take what's given to you in your circumstances um, you know whether it's you know I for, for 15 years have been known as a rock guitar player but I don't have to take those circumstances for granted and have to be that the rest of my life I can go take a uh, take a, a, a direct left turn and play acoustic uh, you know music anytime so that's one of the lessons for a third one how about uh, let's go with uh, Joe Hill Joe Hill, there are no recorded works of Joe Hill, and yet he's my favorite guitar player. Uh, he was the poet laureate of the early um, 20th century working class in the United States, and, and it, it was his, he really kind of set the template for rebel music in the United States for the rest of the century, um, and was, for his good work, was executed by the authorities in Utah and trumped up charges. A lot of people have covered his work, yeah. haven't they? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess yes, they really have. Yes, they have. Many people question. have covered the work of Joe Hill. <laughs> it's a fantastic catalog. And the thing, the thing about Joe Hill, the thing, that, the thing that's most inspirational is, is he, is he said that uh, uh, a book or a pamphlet is read once, but a song is sung over and over and over again. And he was writing music for uh, immigrants from different countries who didn't even speak the same language. Yet they could, they could, they could unite as union members over his rebel song. That's something that's been very inspirational. You're talking a lot about rebel music and. Yeah. What do you define as rebel music? Does it actually have to include anything about rebellion? Yeah. Uh, no, it doesn't. Uh, rebel music is, is music that challenges conventions. And sometimes it can do that lyrically with very explicit songs about let's rally around the union or the president's a prick. Or, or it can be the music itself can be rebellious. They're like the music, whether it's the music of uh, Charlie Parker or Coltrane, which challenges the conventions of music at the time. 